Live from the Mandalay Bay, it is Super Bowl week. Super Bowl 58, Kansas City Chiefs, San Francisco 49ers, Donnie right side, Joe Lisi, and Kelly Stewart. Now, when we talk about the host city, the true host is probably you, Kelly, here. Oh, my gosh. This is so surreal to me. Uh, when I started in the gambling industry, like 2013, starting to do radio yep. hits and yep. writing for, you know, a little newspaper called the Las Vegas Review Journal. I was just over there hanging out with those guys. 11 years later, here we are, yeah. 38 legalized states. I am just kind of in awe. This is my first Super Bowl because I always had to be in Vegas for the Super Bowl because you're the gambling girl. You yep. can't be in Texas. Yeah. You can't be in Florida. Those states weren't legal. Well, Florida is now, but you get the idea. It's it's just been such a like kind of like wow yeah. moment for me. And in, Yeah, I was going to ask, in terms of the city with the gambling perspective, how do you think that's affected everything in terms of the coverage here today? Oh, I think there's definitely more buzz. I mean, there's obviously operators all around that aren't yeah. even legal in the state of Nevada, right? right? But they own massive markets, New York, New Jersey, you know, yep. huge population states. And I find it just really interesting how we're all here in this convention center together. And it's like kind of like a small family. Like we all yeah. know each other. Like I've yep. never met Donnie before, yeah. but I follow him on social media. You and I have yeah. never met in person before True. or have we? Yes, we have at the Westgate. Yes, I take that back. So it is funny because it's like yeah. you know people, yeah. but you never met them. And so yep. now we're kind of all like jumbled together all week, and it's been really a fun time. I'll tell you what's great about Las Vegas. I mean, for obviously for decades, it's always been a destination city. But now being on the sports, you know, come up here, you got the Raiders in town. You built T-Mobile Arena. You got yourself a hockey team. And soon the follow where the Tropicana's at, you're going to have a baseball That's team. We're Couldn't we even get a four? Like the, you might have four professional sports here before it's all said and done. I actually was just talking with uh, one of the guys from the Tampa yeah. Bay Bucks. I live in Florida now, kind of a fun fact. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't know. And no, I'm not changing my handle. But <laughs> I was talking to him. I said, hey, what's next, an NBA team? Yeah. I, you kind of have to wonder. You, But you've got yeah. hockey. You've got baseball. Yeah. And that's basically what I think is going to happen here in Las Vegas as well. Yeah. I, why wouldn't you have an NBA team here? We've seen what Allegiant Stadium being essentially on the strip, yeah. right? Like Correct. block over, you know, having Tropicana getting demolished to build a baseball stadium. Yep. I loved going to T-Mobile when I lived here. The Golden Knights yeah. not only came at the most opportune time yep. and was so needed for the city, they were actually good. Yeah. And nobody expected that. And so it was just, it almost like electrified the city. And yep. I think bringing in uh, full circle all four major sports would be huge for this yep. place. Let's talk about Sunday's matchup. Huge matchup in regards to Kansas City and San Francisco. San Fran, two and a half point favorite, 47 and a half. We talked about it all week. Are you shocked by the fluctuation in regards to the, the movement from one and a half to three and then back down to two and a half? So I feel like all week I've said the same sound bites over and over and over again. Yeah. And something hit me when I was sitting over there talking to my good friend Adam. If this was, let's just call it a 4 p.m. Eastern mm -hmm. Sunday game would we in San Francisco, let's just say, right? Would we really care that much? Yeah. Would we be making this much hype right. around this? I know it's the Super Bowl. Yeah. But that's kind of my attitude towards it. I'm not going crazy here. I think that it is a standalone game. It's going to be a good game. But, like, it, at this point, I'm, I'm getting, like, fatigued. Right. Because it's, like, how good is it going to be? I think we're going to actually see a defensive battle. Mm. Um, and I'm excited to watch it, of course, because it is a Super Bowl. And it's a culmination for all of us in the gambling space. It's kind of like... Okay, football season's over. You can now relax, and then we're right into basketball. But I do find it interesting because people are making such a big to-do about these very minuscule line yeah. moves, right? We're talking, what, 10 cents yep. on the money line? That's not very much. We see that every single NFL Sunday. We see it in the standalone primetime games. Pick them to two and a half, not that big of a deal. We're not going to see three. We all know that. Correct. Um, so I think each operator, whether it's here in Nevada, whether it's in New York, whether it's in Florida, mm -hmm is looking at their futures liability. They're kind of making a, a stand on what they want. I've seen on social media both sides. Yeah. That MGM, I think, is rooting for the Chiefs I saw this morning. Yeah. I talked to my good friends over at Superbook. They said, ah, we're in good shape no matter what happens. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. That's where you want to be from a bookmaker's yep. perspective. And I'm sure that there's a few books out there that will be rooting big for the Niners. And we're all going to see what? What do we have, 48 hours till kickoff now? Not much. Yeah. Something like that, pretty close. So I think over the next two days, it's going to be very telling. But I think a lot is being made of this line move, and it, it's really not that big of a deal. 
Yeah. I, By the I way, agree. Kelly, taking a look at the season itself, before the season, you could probably say, hey, 49ers favorites and yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. The 49ers, even with their losing streak in the middle of the season, nobody really doubted them. But when the Chiefs started struggling on offense, six losses in the regular season, and didn't get home field advantage, I was like, I can't believe they're going to get back, and let alone, here they are in the Super Bowl. Here they are again. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Kansas, and a yeah. lot of people are always shocked that I'm not a Chiefs fan. And I'm like, excuse me, in the 90s when I was a kid, yeah. they weren't any good. Yeah. You know how kids are. You yeah. want to follow a good team. You want to jump on the bandwagon, and that was for me the Denver Broncos, and now they've just been yeah. atrocious yep. for the last, what, seven <laughs> seasons. Uh, all jokes aside you're right what Kansas City has done is probably not getting enough credit yeah I'm not saying that going on the road and winning those games uh was like some I wasn't shocked let's put it that way right I was holding a Ravens futures bet I did not hedge you know they got up as high as uh five I think in Colorado at Circa or one of those books and I thought about calling my sister and being like hey you want to throw a little bit on the plus five for me and I thought again I was like no that's not how I see this playing out yeah Kansas City Wire to wire at that game one. Amazing. Y- you got to give them credit where credit's due. Yep. Uh, here's what I want to know because I don't. I wasn't that impressed the fact that they beat the Dolphins and obviously the Bills and then the Ravens. Ravens a little bit one dimensional, even though they had Lamar. Are you impressed with Kansas City now? How they're playing, and more importantly, do you believe San Francisco has a type of offense to challenge that defense over the top? You know, that's an interesting question. Because we can all sit back and look at the last few games over the yeah. playoffs. And as I mentioned, I had a Ravens ticket. And Me too. And that entire game, I'm like, <laughs> why aren't you? Okay, right out of the gate, Gus Edwards, what did he get? Four, 12, 14 yards, something. His right. first carry was 15 right. yards. Yeah, Here right. they go, the Ravens right. will right. rumble. And, and yep. I said, I liked Lamar over rushing yep. uh, attempts in that game. I said, yep. if things get a little squirrely, what's he going to do? He's going to take off. And they completely abandoned the run. So what I'd like to say is, yes, I would love to see Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, running their little butts mm-hmm. off yep. against this defense because we're talking 114 yards a yep. game. That is kind of the the one lone spot and that Kansas City defense that you can exploit. Why didn't Todd uh, Moy- is it Moykin? Munkin. 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 Munkin, yeah. Exploit it? I don't know. Yeah, and forget his name. Forget his name. I, basically, <laughs> I, I joked with Ariel, Ariel Epstein, big Ravens fan. Yes. I'm like, so do you want him fired? She's like, no. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I was like, well, I want him fired. <laughs> anyway, I, you know, you get a little emotional yeah. sometimes when you lose bets like that. But I would say I'd like to see him run the ball. I'd like to see him open it up with George Kittle, use the big-bodied man. I feel like he's kind of just been out there yeah. like on an island. Every once in a while you'll see a big, a big play right. from them. But for the most part, I feel like he's been really underutilized this year. And maybe he's still been a little banged up, and they don't talk about that yeah. all the time. Um, so I think they're going to have to control the clock. I mean, you want to beat Kansas City, you're going to have to have a low-scoring game. By the way, when you take a look at the two quarterbacks coming in, if you just did that, like, silhouette and said, who had the better numbers, everybody would probably go, oh, it's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. It was actually Brock Purdy. Yes, it was. He has to step up in the biggest spot. Do you think he can deliver? Because the one thing we do know is Mahomes is going to play well and not give the game away. How about Brock Purdy in this one? It's funny you say that because – how it was asked to me, and this is by my good friend C.T. Betts that also is okay, on Sports sure. Grid. C.T. said to me, he goes, Kel, two minutes left. Mm-hmm. Who do you want to be your quarterback? I'm like, okay. <laughs> if you give me that hypothetical, Correct. you already know the yeah. answer. And he goes, well, you better hope the Niners yeah. don't give them two minutes left. And that's exactly what we saw. You mentioned the Bills game uh, where on yeah. the flip side, there was a couple other times this year where – there were some calls, yep. whether you agreed with them sure. or not, that, but Patrick Mahomes had the ball mm-hmm. in his hands and was actively yeah. going to score a touchdown yep. uh, there, but MBS was offsides. Yeah. I am concerned about that. Brock Purdy, though, seems like, and now I followed Brock Purdy when he was at Iowa State, Big yeah. 12 girl, so I watch a lot of Big 12 football, and I was not particularly impressed by him whatsoever. Yeah. There is not some moment from his college career that I'm like, yes, he's got the stones, he can get it done for us. But I will say... Being so harped on about being Mr. Irrelevant, mm-hmm. right? Being so harped on about he's not any good. Yeah. He's a game manager. And he's remarkably quiet and yeah. humble. And I think he's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't shown me, like, anything definitive that I'm like, okay, got yeah. it. He's got it. Now, I will say in the last two playoff games, obviously they were down 27-7 to the Lions. Impressive comeback. Right? Nice comebacks yeah. in the second half versus the Packers as well. Yep. So – it would appear that, yeah, he can get it done. Yeah. You don't have to give a prediction, but you mentioned a lower-scoring game. Where do you see the final score? 27-17 Niners. I think I like the uh, Chiefs team total under as well. Yeah. I, I will give you guys uh, one thing. So, good friend of mine, Pam Maldonado. Mm-hmm. Loves, oh, we know Pam. Yeah. Tennis. Yeah, tennis, tennis. Tennis, golf. 
Uh, she's actually at the Lyft there. tournament yeah. right now with all my friends. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. sorry, some of us have to work. Uh, all jokes aside, she had said to me yesterday, she's like, look at these second half unders with the Chiefs. And I said, and Ariel goes, hey, wait a minute. Don't you always bet the Niners opponent team total under in the second, yeah. in the second half? I go, yeah, every single game. Yeah. It has been absolute utter money. Yeah. And so I'm looking at this going, all right, I want to like the under. Probably not going to bet it until halftime. I think mm. I think we could see it, it sitting on 24 at half, and I'm pissed off already yeah. and yep. going, I should have waited. <laughs> I think you can get a better number either live. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think looking at both of those, Chiefs team total, if, if you can get it in the second half yeah. and then the second half under. Uh, but, yeah, I do, I do think it is going to be more of a defensive battle, which nobody wants to hear. Everybody wants points, points, points in the Super Bowl. I'm going to be the contrarian per usual. There you go. The under, it looks like, from Kelly's perspective, the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> looks like it might come in here. Well, Kelly, thanks for your time. And by the way, the host city is Las Vegas, but the true host, Kelly in Vegas here. For Donnie Wrightside, Joe Lisi, that's Kelly right there. She knows what she's talking about. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, guys.